In Disney's Frozen, the trolls warn Elsa's parents that she must learn to control her powers or there could be terrible consequences. Later in life, Elsa loses control of her powers and plunges Arendelle into an endless winter. The trolls learn of this and are shocked, not because she failed to suppress her powers, but because she never learned to use them. The trolls meant for her to learn control through practicing her powers, not avoiding them. And the first time that we truly see Elsa start to control her powers is when she stops holding back and finally decides to let it go. Did you see what I did there? Like Elsa, every child has a power inside of them. Well, not like a magical, well, kind of a magical power in like a cheesy, whimsical way, but not like a super power. And what I'm trying to say is every child has the power of their own choices. As adults, we have to make choices every day, and there isn't always someone around to tell us what choices to make. If we aren't decisive and resilient with our choices, it can be so easy to waste our precious time on this earth with an unfulfilling or unhappy life. But when do we learn to make choices? When do we learn to take charge of our own destiny? Why not from the start? Montessori believed that children could and should make their own choices every day. They should choose their own work. They should learn to take responsibility for their own care. They should even learn to take care of the classroom. Everything they can do for themselves, they should do. And with as little adult intervention as possible. She said, we must help the child act for himself, will for himself, think for himself. Basically, we have to let it go. We have to let them practice making their own choices. We can't make them for them just because we're afraid that they'll make the wrong ones. She didn't believe this because she was an idealist. She saw that young children are happy when you teach them how to take responsibility for themselves, that they want to make their own choices. So she let them. And she was astounded by what young children are capable of when you establish the right kind of culture and give them the right kind of environment and just teach them to take care of themselves and let them do so. Putting it that way, it sounds almost easy. Well, easy might be a stretch. As a parent, it can be hard to create the kind of environment that fosters personal responsibility. I don't usually have the time to really let my children figure out how to do things by themselves, and I rarely have the time to clean up and try again when they fail. On top of that, most of the rest of the world is built for adults. And the places that are built for children are built for their entertainment, distraction, or fun. And there's nothing wrong with having fun, but there's more to life than fun. There's more to children than fun. Montessori called her first school a children's house. It was a place meant for children, for the whole child. A place where everything is accessible and designed for a child to use. A place where there's time to try and fail and clean up and try again. A place of focus where children can reach that satisfaction of doing something on their own. And a place where children can create and participate in a positive and dynamic classroom culture. If Elsa had learned to master her powers, to take personal responsibility for them, it's far less likely that she would have lost control. Elsa, like all children, would have been better off learning how to be in control than trying to stay under control. Thank you for joining me today, and I hope you'll stop by again next time.